Lake Victoria Basin is a region highly vulnerable to climate change. Due to livelihood patterns, income levels, diversity of ecosystem, and the ecological fragility. Climate change, which is mostly associated with global warming, refers to the rise in average surface temperatures on Earth. An overwhelming scientific consensus maintains that climate change is primarily due to the human use of fossil fuels and greenhouse gases released into the air. Human activities such as deforestation, poor land use, and greenhouse gas emission cause climate change. A healthy environment that ensures that we have adequate uh, quantities of water, uh, supply of energy, uh, food security, is very, very important. So first, we need to conserve the environment so that we are able to get these resources that support our livelihoods. Our programs within the ministry, in particular, focus on conservation of environment through an integrated landscape conservation. That includes uh, focusing on uh, the type of uh, trees that can be planted along the rivers, how we can conserve our rivers. When we have looked at some of the rivers around, there's no water flowing in those rivers. It is red soil going down Lake Victoria. But we want to say that when we work together with communities through uh, structures such as uh, Water Resource Users Association, uh, forest, uh, community forest associations, we can be able to conserve and protect the environment and ensure that there is food security despite climate change. Um, climate change in the Lake Victoria Basin is manifested through increased surface temperatures in most areas, rainfall decreasing in some areas, while increasing in other areas causing drought and heavy rainfall which has led to flooding. Climate change has affected communities living across the Lake Victoria Basin. In Nyatike, the region has experienced extreme droughts, which has led to hunger, death of livestock, and damage of crops. This has led to wastage of huge tracts of land, which could be economically viable, thus increasing poverty levels in the community. We have been experiencing the drought for about six months because uh, the area never received the salt rains, as usual. So actually, the disaster has been so extreme that we have lost o over three quarters of our animals, livestock. And even the small bowls are now down. The level of water is quite down. And even now, as I'm talking, there are many animals rotting in the, the riparian part of the, the, the adjacent part of the lake. So many of them, they cannot move. And even now, they are removing other animals which are tired from the uh, upper areas to the lower end. And whenever they reach there, they take a lot of water, which overweighs them, and they can never move anymore. And they are rotting there. Uh, out of them, they, they are not even mar not marketable. And uh, nyama is everywhere. It's a health hazard even now. It's terrible. We have not planted. The, the, we don't know when the rain will come. And the population is large. The population affected is around 15,000 across the riparian section. 15,000 people. As a result of the ravaging drought in Nyetike, the government decided to set up lower Kuja irrigation scheme to mitigate the drought and perennial flooding in the basin. The community are very happy with this project. And uh, we know that in the near future, if the, the crops will be ready, the food shortage that we have been with in Natike as a sub-county will be over because the community will be ready and will be growing crops every month. And we shall not be depending on relief which has been our perennial problem during floods and during drought. Because Yatike has two natural phenomena. There is drought in some type of the year and there is flooding 
in the other side of uh, part of the year. But now that we shall have this irrigation crop going on, I mean, say irrigation water going on throughout, we shall also have to challenge the drought and know how to deal with the floods. Global warming brings about heavy rainfall. This is because warmer air can hold more moisture, leading to heavier precipitation, which leads to flooding along the Lake Victoria Basin, such as the Kano Plains, Budalangi, and Nyatike. Floods have various social consequences for communities. The immediate impact of flooding include loss of lives, damage to property, destruction to crops, loss of livestock, and deterioration of health conditions owing to waterborne diseases. I want to say that uh, recently the flood, uh, the river Kuja burst its banks, and the flood came out spread to the fields and affected a number of homes was submerged and in the process uh, led people to move to two camps. I just want to appeal that more, more assistance be given because uh, we don't see the, the flood subsiding recent, recently like today. The flood has arose again and uh, the number, the population affected has also surged up. So initially, as I've said, we received 125 households that was recorded in one camp. Now, this camp only, the number has surged and it is uh, going at about 200. But uh, truly, we appreciate the government effort uh, that has been put in place to assist the affected persons. The government of Kenya, in conjunction with World Bank, has created bodies like Western Kenya Community Driven Development and Flood Mitigation Project, such as the Lake Victoria Environmental Management Project to Kenya and the National Irrigation Board to mitigate on climate change in the lake basin. The Lake Victoria Environmental Project uh, is being undertaken by the five partner states. Now, the project aims at um, addressing issues challenging the environment situation in the Lake Victoria Basin. Uh, there are three, com three main components and the other one is on management. The first one is on um, dealing with the harmonization of policies, laws and regulations. The second one is on pollution control. But the third one is on watershed management, which is the core of the activities undertaken in the partner states. Uh, in these, the arrangements to arrest the situation of degradation in the catchment side uh, of the basin, where too many activities, human activities, are being undertaken. In Nyatike, the government set up Lower Kuja Irrigation Scheme, which was started to reduce flooding in Nyatike and improve the livelihood of the community. This is evident by the community starting farming as a means of earning livelihood and like formerly practicing livestock rearing only. Actually, the Wakuja irrigation scheme, is, as you know, is, is in Imigodi and is one of our major irrigation schemes or projects that we are developing currently. So the objective of this project is first of all to produce food for the community produce food for, for the county and even to produce food that can be exported outside that county. And so doing, we found out that the income levels of the community will come up. And of course now we expect the living standards also to improve. So this project is for food, food uh, security and uh, improvement of the income the people in Rwakuja. I'm very much thankful for the government to have brought this project in Nyateke. Brought this project, we know we are going to sustain ourselves through producing more crops. For example, we are going to do cash crops, which we are going to get money from that. 
Due to climate change, the Lake Victoria Basin has experienced unpredictable rainfall patterns. This has led to shifts of water level in the lake. Studies have proved that there is a positive correlation between water level and fish finding. Abundant fish catches are highly correlated with rainfall. The records show that catches reduced between 60% to 70% during the reduction of water level in the lake. The fishermen are complaining about fish catches. And uh, uh, we found that the main fish which is being landed is Nile perch and uh, Omena. Apart from the unsanitary conditions at the uh, shoreline settlements, we are also having uh, discharge, solid waste discharge and liquid waste from industries, from the sewage systems around the lake that is also contributing to the stress of the lake. And this uh, tends to affect the fish diversity, uh, interferes with the spawning grounds, such as that the catches is one of the challenges facing the fishermen along the, the landing sites. The catches are going down and we believe that pollution is a contributory factor. Farmers in the Lake Victoria Basin undergo perennial crop losses. During dry season, water scarcity leads to crop failure. While in the rainy season, floods wash away all crops. As a result, the government has set up bodies like Lake Victoria Environmental Management Project 2 Kenya, National Environmental Management Authority, and Water Resource Management Authority. This is to enhance understanding of climate change and its effect locally among the population and stakeholders in Kenya. Mazingira kiwasafi 